Australia's New South Wales and Queensland are being devoured by over a billion mice. What in the world? <laughs> They're nibbling, gnawing, and scratching their way through anything or anyone in their path. Viral social media posts from desperate farmers show floods of mice pouring from hay bales and blanketing the ground in unfathomable numbers. The scurrying rodents decimate crops and destroy stored food, invading silos, sheds, and homes. They're in the cupboard. They're tickling the ivories. They're pooping in your shoes. I've heard stories from our neighbors and friends how they're lying in bed and a mouse runs across the bed. I woke up switching a, a mouse out of oh. my head. It's like the plagues of Egypt there. Sure, individually they might be cute, but these icky mickeys are a menace to the physical and mental health of Australians. A skin-crawling, primordial horror. An old world pestilence. A literal plague. Yeah, it's an absolute plague. There's just mice everywhere. There's footage on social media at the moment of basically the ground moving. People are literally tie strings around their trousers if they're walking through mice because they don't want them running up their trouser legs. Steve Henry is a mouse expert who coordinates rodent control efforts between scientists, businesses, and farmers. 14 grams. Really what we're doing is, is dealing with an invasive species. The mice we have here probably came to Australia with the very first boats that came. Mouse plagues have been recorded in Australia as far back as 150 years ago. The house mouse most likely first hitched a ride on British ships in the 18th and 19th centuries. You know, just one colonizer giving a lift to another. A model invader, the house mouse thrives in even the most inhospitable conditions, squirming its way into ecosystems all over the world. But in Australia, whose unique flora and fauna are particularly vulnerable to invasive species, the house mouse has also grown into a serious agricultural pest. In 1993, one bad mouse plague, as seen in this ABC News footage, ended up causing more than $90 million in damage. And while the country sees these booms in population every few years, the current plague is reportedly the worst in a decade. Often it occurs after a run of dry years and then conditions become favorable for growing good crops, but those conditions are also favorable for mouse breeding. House mice can start breeding at around six weeks old and birth a litter of six to 10 pups every few weeks after that leading to dramatic, rapid bursts in population growth. In one breeding season, a single pair of mice can multiply into 500, and all of those mice are hungry. Just ask Guy Roth. Farms have had stored grain, and obviously mice like grain, and so they've caused a lot of damage to that as well. And right now, we're about to start planting wheat, and potentially the mice will eat the germinating seed when it's planted in the ground. Growing crops like wheat and fava beans, the facility's home to around 200 head of cattle, and now, about 2 million mice. What we need to do is bait to control those mice, and that costs $20 a hectare. And some farmers have spent up to $50,000 to $100,000 on their farms, but not only in the grain, but also the stored hay, which people were saving for the next drought. It's ruined the hay. They've just got in and eaten it or manured all through it and ruined the hay. Whole shipments of crops like sorghum have been too contaminated with mouse poop to be sold. And contamination doesn't end with crops. Mice carry a number of diseases that can be contracted by humans. In Queensland, there's been at least 78 reports of leptospirosis, a bacterial infection that without treatment can cause kidney failure, meningitis, and respiratory complications. Hospitals in New South Wales have reported patients bitten by mice, and dead mice have been found in water tanks, sparking fears of contaminated drinking water. Meanwhile, grocery stores have seen waves of mice chew through entire inventories, emptying shelves. One local market reported more than $20,000 in mouse-related losses. Surely, you must be thinking, there's something Australians can do about all these mice. Well, there's no simple solution, but there is one technique they've been trying out called killing as many goddamn mice as possible. We only have one tool to control mice, and that's zinc phosphides coated on grain, spread at one kilogram per hectare. And it is a nasty chemical and it's banned for use in, in other countries, but the chances of secondary poisoning are quite low. Bait might be the main government-sanctioned tool for controlling mice, 
But as seen in this Channel 7 footage of the 1984 plague, where one Malali farmer breaks out a flamethrower, Australians have also been known to get creative. I thought the best thing to do is eat them. There's four beautiful little mice. Just get a nice close-up of that there. And these days, some locals are turning to homemade solutions. Everyone's asking me, how do you make the trap? Well, it's pretty simple. A mouse comes along. Oh, smells nice, smells nice. Straight off there, plonk, into a bucket of water. I don't condone any of these ones because some of them are not particularly humane. These are animals, and so we need to be respectful. And so if we're going to be controlling them, we need to be doing it in the most humane way possible. Someone sent the plans for a large vacuum to go around and vacuum up the mice and then incinerate them as they were being vacuumed up, and that's not going to fly. Traps and poison are fine, but most would assume this notorious mouse predator could handle the job. There were efforts to release cats, and they get, take a terrible toll on our native species, unfortunately. So yeah, cats is out. So one of the, the wonderful things I hear from farmers is I know that the mice are really bad when our pet cats and dogs stop eating them, and they just get sick of it. They'll just sit and watch the mice go by. Though there is one group of local predators who can't get enough of the mouse plague. Australia is a particularly snaky country. The mouse plague is a regular buffet for slithering reptiles like the western brown snake, which have reportedly been bigger and fatter than usual this year. Though when the mouse gravy train slows down, predators like snakes whose populations boomed will instead start chowing down on Australia's unique and endangered native species, which is bad. And even a bumper crop of chubby snakes isn't nearly enough to curb the short-term mouse tsunami, especially since even death doesn't seem to stop these mice from being a nuisance. When people start poisoning mice with baits, they go underneath houses and into, into secluded spaces to die, so the smell of rotting mouse bodies becomes all pervasive. And the worst part about it in your house is the smell of a dead mouse, and that's what's really getting to people, and that smell has really had a large emotional toll. That's another one of the factors that, that, that sort of becomes psychologically wearing on you. The social impacts of mouse outbreaks are largely unquantified, but significant. And so people living with mice all the time become exhausted by it. After months of petitioning government agencies to step in, farmers have been given allowance to start using stronger rodenticides. And in May, the New South Wales government announced a $50 million support package to help rural residents fight off the plague. They don't really worry me, but I don't want them at me. Ah! <laughs> With planting of winter grain underway, there's a fear that mice will destroy the crop before it even gets growing. Recently, a bout of wet weather slowed the mice down a bit. The plague has plateaued in some areas of the country, though other regions are still seeing spread. Usually, there's eventually a crash. The mice will eat their way through the food supply and begin to starve, even turning on each other. And then one day, they're suddenly just not there. They do tend to just basically disappear, and farmers just say, well, I don't know where they've gone. Right now, the mice are digging deep networks of winter burrows. And if a crash doesn't come soon, a large mouse population could survive the cold. A bad way to start off future growing seasons. We're going into winter now. We're hoping the mice population might drop in the cold weather, but it's not looking like that at the moment. 